This is how people typically deal with food scraps. They put them in the trash, they have a tabletop compost bin, or they end up putting them down the drain, which is a big no-no if you have a septic tank. But there is a way that you can reduce the smell, save your septic tank, and get rid of that unsightly compost bin on your worktop. And this is the answer. It's a Supura, and it fits under your sink just like an Insyncreator. All you need to do is remove the Insyncreator and fit the Supura. So let me show you how to fit one. When working with electrical components, isolate the power. So I'm going to pull out the plug for my dishwasher as well, just while I'm at it, to give me more room in the back. I'm also going to remove the doors, but that's for filming purposes. Then I'm going to start disconnecting all the pipes that connect my drain to my in-sink area. This is going to give me as much room as possible to get the new Supura in here. Supura did send me this compost and garbage disposal, so I can show you how to install one. If you are interested in getting one for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm also going to take off my dishwasher drain pipe. Now this thing is a mess and it needs replaced, but I'll do that at a later point. I'm just going to get everything back in place before doing that. Then I'm going to use a screwdriver to pry off this locking ring on the top of the sink creator. It's a little bit seized here and I couldn't do it by hand. Now note that you may need to put something underneath the sink creator here to support the weight as it is a little bit heavy. And then I can remove that by turning that ring to the left. Then I'm going to undo all the screws at the top here of this plate. There are three, you don't need to undo them very far, but you need to undo them enough so you can get to this little locking ring here. And then you could take a flathead screwdriver and pry this off. And that's gonna allow you to completely take off this bottom flange to the sink. Just be careful when you're working around here as when you undo this, it might spring off and hit you in the face. But I caught mine here and we can move on. Then I'm just gonna remove the rest of the flange, take this bit off to the bottom and then take the top piece out from above and then we're going to get the new one ready to install. So I'm going to undo these three screws like we just did on the old one so that we can get to the split ring and undo that. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver again. And this time I was not prepared to catch the split ring and it went firing off. Luckily it didn't hit me, uh, but be careful when that's happening. We're just going to take everything apart so we can start the install process of this new flange. I'm going to clean the sink just to make sure it's prepped and ready for the new flange to go on because we want a good seal there. We don't want any leaks. Just wiping it off here after cleaning it. Some key dimensions that you need to check before you purchase the Pura to make sure it fits into your sink. So you need between 17 and 22 inches from the base to the bottom of your sink. And right here I have 20. From the center point of the drain to the back of all, you need 6.9 inches. And we have eight and a half. You need 12 and a half inches from the center point of the drain to the front of the cabinet. Make sure that the superior can fit in when it's in the closed position, and we have 15. And make sure you have 13 inches of width underneath here to fit the superior in. My cabinet here has a lip on it. If you've got a flat cabinet, you won't have to make any modifications, but if you have a lip like this, I'll show you how to tackle that later on in the video. But this is going to be a problem when the superior sits down in the bottom of this cabinet, so we need to accommodate for that. Superior does come with a gasket to secure the flange to the sink, but I'm going to use some plumber's putty here as I think it's going to be a better seal. We can set this in here and make sure it's centered. Now it's important to make sure you install this the correct way. We have a little bit of the putty coming through and that's okay. We've got a good seal still. Next plate and we're going to put this in position like that. And then the one with the three screws, that's going to go on next. This is where you wish you have more hands, but we can probably figure this out. And then with your spare fifth hand, you put this locking ring on. And there you go, it just clips in place. Now that everything clipped in place, you just take your screwdriver and start screwing these in. Now do this as evenly as possible, because you want to make sure this is even. Uh, so turn these, turn one, and then move on to the next one. That's going to mean that you get even pressure when you get closer to this being tight. It's also going to make it we'll move up together and make sure it's going to be even across the board. If you have a dishwasher, you need to knock out the little plug in here. Push it through. It's just a little rubber um, piece that I've now lost in here. Push out that little rubber plug. Now we're going to take our Supura, I guess this is the motor part, 
just take a little gasket, comes separately. I'm going to slot this over the top of here. And that's important to make sure it doesn't leak. It doesn't come pre-installed, so you will have to get that out of the bag. It does come with the spear. And then we're going to lift this up and use this lock and ring to lock it in place. So this is a little bit heavy. Um, probably a bit very similar to the insync router that we just removed. So not too bad. And we're, we're going to position this so that this is facing the door, or where the door will be when the door is installed. And as always, I do like to give things a little bit of a shake test to make sure they're secure and that's secure. I just need to put the dishwasher pipe on and well, I will be replacing this dishwasher pipe because it's pretty gross as you probably could see before. Uh, but we'll use it for now and then we'll uh, replace it at a later date. Uh, apply this and we're going to do a little bit of modifying to our drain system to get this all lined up. But this is what it's going to look like now. I'm just going to secure this to the back here. The two screws supplied. Let's have the flexible drain line secured to the back of the Supira. I've got mine routed around this water line here. I ran out of room behind. Now everyone's going to have a different setup depending on where your drain is in relation to the back of the Supira. And for me, it's over here and I've started working on getting this set up and ready to connect to the back of the Supira. So let me finish this up here. Everyone's going to be a little bit different, but just make sure that any pipes are on this side, right hand side or left hand side, are not in the way of the Supira. So I've done a Bit here to make sure that the Supura or the rest of the Supura collection system is not going to hit this pipe here. I'm going to put another connection point here, 90 degree here, and then connect these two together. So, have all the plumbing finished, it's connected from the back of the separator all the way to the drain, and we've got this drain fixed as well, so everything's back where it needs to be. And we've made sure that this here is going to clear the box of the Supura when it's installed. Now it's time to tackle this lip here because we're going to install the box of the Supura. I've got a little one by threes here. I'm going to put these in and then put the Supura on top of this. And that's going to allow everything to just slide out. We'll have to get them positioned correctly once we've got the rest of it installed. But that's going to give me the clearance that I need to get the Supura waste bin out. Having the waste bin on the separator removed is going to make this next step really easy. So you need to take the other two pieces and slot it in over at the back of the separator, we're going to call that. If you're interested in getting a Supura, I've left a link in the description below so you can check that out. Now you need to take this little clip here, you got one for each side. Make sure that the back of the Supura is flush with the foam seal on the back. Make sure you're going to get no smells coming through. Take this and slide it in here. Now, this is how it can adjust height up and down, so if you have a narrow, shorter sink, then this will be lower. You can always adjust this at a later point if you did get it wrong, but having this flush with the back is going to mean that you're going to have everything lined up the way it's meant to be. You're not going to get any smells coming out the back, so you're going to have a good seal, and then everything's going to end up in the waste bin as it should. Now you can install the two screws that secure the collection center to the separator, and then connect the data cable at the top here. I found it easier just to pull it through where the charcoal filter will go, and then tuck it back under so it's not in the way. Here does come with these three quarter inch screws, but these are not going to be long enough to go through the block of wood that I need. They're also quite shallow as well, depending on how you're going to have this set up. Um, so what I'm going to be using is inch and five eighths. Now these are deck and eight screws. But that's all I had lying around the right size to do this. So make sure to plug this in beforehand. If your plug is behind the Supura or in an corner like mine is here. I've got to figure out how to install this now. With the lights flashing, it's time to connect your Supira to your Wi-Fi. Follow the instructions. Really simple to follow, like connecting anything else to your Wi-Fi. Um, so let's get this connected and we'll come back with it all set up. The Supira is now connected to Wi-Fi. We have the waste bin in here. This closes. And then up top, we have our charcoal filter. Let's so make sure none of the smells come out. And this light is on white. It was a little bit tricky to connect. We had to use an iPhone and it worked perfectly, but with my Android, it did not work very well. To install the button, clean off your work surface, make sure it's clean, peel off 
the 3M tape on the back and then stick it down. I haven't installed mine yet as I haven't decided if I want to put it close to the sink like this or put it a little bit further away. Install the button on your work surface where you want and press it once to calibrate the bin. This will make sure that the height is correct based on how tall your sink is so that you can get notified when the secure is actually full. So water will go straight down this drain, but if you have something like this lemon here, uh, you put this in here, press this button. And in a few seconds, whole piece of lemon are down here. So let's do a couple other tests on smaller pieces and see if they work too. So let's try a couple pieces of garlic, see how this works with that. Push them in. And they're already there. Let's test this out. I'm going to run some water and see if any water does end up in the bucket before I start putting anything else in there. So I just want to make sure nothing leaks. We got a little bit of water in here, um, but I was running the auger with the water on. You know, not the best way to do that. You want to turn the water off, then turn the auger on, and then it will keep going. And that's how you install a Supura under your sink to replace your insincreator and get rid of that ugly compost bin on your worktop. If you did like today's video, make sure you check out this video over here.